Well, we found uh, at Transparency International that um, natural resource development is particularly vulnerable to corruption. And uh, this has a number uh, of reasons. Um, so, uh, first of all, I think we have to recognize that the so-called resource curse has a very strong sort of macroeconomic and um, sector economic uh, component, uh, which has to do with um, uh, focusing very much on this uh, very strong sector of uh, mining or oil or gas development, which is called the Dutch disease because it was first uh, uh, observed in, in the Netherlands. Um, but uh, apart from this um, macroeconomic uh, component, which has to be countered by uh, very complicated measures, by isolating certain uh, parts of the, uh, of the resources which suddenly come into the country, uh, by uh, making a tremendous effort to diversify the economy, by making an effort also to make sure that there is sort of intergenerational uh, justice by uh, uh, creating uh, sovereign funds or things of this nature. Apart from that difficulty, which in itself is uh, prone to corruption, um, there is the tremendous temptation which comes for both sides, the investors but also for the host governments, uh, with the uh, immense values which uh, play a role in this. I mean, if you consider that a uh, uh, oil platform, for instance, or a gas platform somewhere in the sea uh, can cost billions of dollars. Uh, but even normal um, uh, mining ventures cost very often hundreds of millions of dollars. The infrastructure that is required for that, huge amounts of money. Uh, there, uh, the temptation, for instance, for um, the decision makers in the host country to um, uh, accept uh, payments for themselves, you know, perhaps on a on a account of a uh, uh, a tax haven or so, uh, but also maybe on a, on accounts in Germany or in Luxembourg or Switzerland or Liechtenstein. The temptation to accept that is is tremendous, in particular in countries where you have relatively fragile governments with uh, very little security for ministers, even presidents, uh, or top people in, uh, in parastatal companies. Um, it is uh, a great temptation if a promoter of an investor of a big company, say from the US or from the UK or from Germany, comes and says, here I set up an account for you in, uh, in somewhere in a, in a safe place uh, and I pay you ten million dollars if you give me a mining license uh, which is worth billions of dollars. So I mean this temptation one should not underestimate. Uh, but it's also a temptation for the investors because they are the ones who want to uh, get uh, an enabling environment for their investment where they can count on very little interference by the government, very little political influence um, on uh, whom they hire, where they buy their material, what kind of infrastructure they want to build and so on. So um, for both sides, the uh, temptation to try to find a way uh, to make uh, special arrangements um, uh, is very, very great. And uh, also one has to add that um, extractive industries are normally rather complex investments and therefore it's very hard for the people, for instance, or even for uh, the members of parliament in a country to understand fully what it means to spend uh, hundreds of millions of dollars in exploration, you know, in uh, looking for, uh, for oil and gas and deep water and so on. So to explain uh, to them exactly what it means uh, to write off, for instance, say, prospecting and drilling expenses, uh, to explain to them or, uh, or the local media or the civil society uh, what is a just and fair deal is very, very complicated. And these are normally exactly the elements which lead to grand corruption. And this is why we at Transparency International we found very soon that if you want to make a difference there, we need some very special tools. And this is why we developed some special tools.